Hello, everybody, and welcome to week seven of the Million Dollar Mission. I'm going to be your host for the next hour or so, uh, Moose, at CFB underscore Moose on Twitter. From Occupy Fantasy at OccupyFantasy.com, uh, at Occupy Fantasy on Twitter. I'm alongside co host for this stream, Brian Jester FF on Twitter. Brian, the co founder of Occupy Fantasy. What's going on, man? So what's, what is going on? Uh, busy time of the year here on October with uh, all the different sports going on. You know, for Lucky, I think, no, I guess, uh, yeah. When can we get uh, four, f- all four sports on the same day? We have a chance at it coming up, right? Uh, yes, I'm sure there there's a day when that's possible. Uh, I, I still remember it was, I think, two years ago when – two or three years ago when there was all five major league sports with MLS included all in the same city. So that was, that all had right. to be crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we, we need the, the, the quad factor for, uh, for all four sports so we can play DFS on a different lineup in each sport. That'd be great. We'll just have everybody from Occupy just on different sides of the screens and everything. <laughs> I'll do it. Uh, so, That'd be great. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so what's going on? We're doing our million dollar mission. Uh, for those who are new around the block, Brian, you want to explain to them what this is? Yeah, sure. So, what we try to do here is discuss my previous week's 150 NFL DFS lineups. Normally, we'll do DraftKings. We'll talk about some FanDuel strategy as well. Talking about player exposures. Talking about different game stacks and GPP theory. Uh, talking about uh, how to use DFS Magic, the lineup builder that we've partnered with for the NFL season and will be available shortly for the NBA uh, regular season. And uh, and just kind of reviewing what we saw and, and talking about what we learned in my quest to uh, win the million dollars on DraftKings for a second time. Yep. Uh, yeah, and TIL is hard. It's hard to win the GPP. <laughs> um, yeah, it, and it was a, and if you look at the top, You'll see Brian's topic, leverage plays for the week. That's what his exposure was across those 150 lineups, and minus what the field exposure was. Uh, so basically, for these top plays, he really wanted them to go off. Narr- narrator, they did not go off. Um, yeah. But you know that is that is a part of uh, that's a part of life. You know things aren't going to always go the way you seem. He wants them to go. Uh, had some bad breaks, but you know we just got to keep trusting the process as as we do before, as we always do, and uh, we'll go from there. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's talk about your ROI. We normally bring that up every stream here. Let's see if I can pull the right one up. It was while you're pulling that up. You know, we've had uh, one person actually told me it's like it's not helpful for you to do a stream every week talking about how much money you lose. And it's like, okay, well, it's not. It's t- exactly exciting for me to talk about the money I lost anyways, but one, it's transparent. Mm-hmm. We're talking about real results here. Uh, but also, two, I-, I hope people get a lot more than that from these streams when we talk about strategy and and uh, for, the, for the people who try out 150 max and realizing that it's tough. And then if you decide to do it, it's showing you um, h- how to do it properly. Yeah, and, and I will say, just to append to that, you have no idea where I'm going with this, but uh, I had lunch. I was out at for a contract work and I went to this Chinese spot and they said they'd pay for my lunch there are these two bookies that were right beside me <laughs> shooting it up in like like noon in a chinese restaurant and the one awesome. guy i was talking about he was like yeah this guy always posts to twitter about his plays uh but he owes me so much money every week and the other guy was like yeah you know you only hear about when people win people don't want to tell you when they lost so uh we're really trying sure. to change that stigma here whether you win or lose and you know we trust our processes and so we just want to be fully transparent with everything going on yeah, great analogy, and it's very true. And you gotta love the hashtag bookie life um, <laughs> eating Chinese food at, at noon on a Wednesday. Um, but yeah, no, like, and I've said this every week of the million dollar mission, uh, especially now that I've had this huge win, not only for bankroll purposes, for tax purposes, like I'm highly incentivized to to spend more money on DraftKings, and um, at least for this calendar year. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, just in general, I have a high risk approach now. I wouldn't be putting this much money in if I didn't win the million, but I still have a similar strategy as far as uh, playing mostly high risk contests. And the way I think about things is a very high risk approach. And I'm going to lose way more often than I win. We talked about this in the Monday night daily plug. 
where the, the Patriots fading defense, fading Tom Brady, was a very high-risk approach. And we even said in the plug that you'll probably lose if this happens. However, <laughs> I think we need to t- – people may look at that and say, well, why would you tell me to do this if I'm going to lose? Well, the point is it's not how often you win. It's how much you win when you're right. Yep. And that's how that strategy was. We told people don't just go out of your bankroll, take a shot on the strategy. And that's the way my GPP strategy is. It's like I'm going to lose a lot because I'm taking shots and, you know, very calculated risks. But in those 5, 10, 15 percent of the times that I win, the wins will be massive as evidenced by, you know, the, the high finishes I've had in GPPs throughout the year. So mm-hmm. uh, it's not for the average player. It's very, very mentally taxing if you're not prepared for it. Um, and, and it can it can really get you down. So when you see, you know, minus 90 percent ROI in a given week, it, it can certainly uh, cause you to want to quit DFS. However, you have the long term goal in mind. And, you know, like I said, we'll see, this 90 percent of people aren't playing this way in DFS. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, and speaking of, you know, your minus 89 percent ROI, uh, if you take a look here uh, for your year to date, you are minus 36 percent. Which, and again, in the grand scheme of things, if you get up there, which, you know, you're trusting your process, you've all, you've had opportunities to be up there before, that ROI goes from negative 36 to in the hundreds, if not thousands. Right. Very, very true. You know, that's where the top 10 finish, you know, this becomes a positive win. Um, and obviously, this doesn't include showdown as well, which is an, another different story. It doesn't include FanDuel winnings. It doesn't include other sports. This is strictly just the DraftKings Millionaire Maker. And again, this shows how top heavy the payouts are and how um, if you're just playing one or two lineups or, uh, you know, you're not 150 maxing the, the Millionaire Maker, it goes to show how uh, big of a bankroll drainer it can be um, unless you have the actual bankroll to play it. Yeah, and so I, I want to get your opinion on this. I know you you maxed the $10 uh, fan, the Millionaire on DraftKings. Did you do anything with the $3,000 entry? Yeah, I was fortunate enough to uh, to win one ticket to that. So I had one entry in the three thousand dollars tournament, and um, you know it had similar plays as you see in the leveraged ones above in the scrolling ticker. Uh, so you can probably guess how that went. <laughs> no, but I mean, as we talked about on on our last stream about that, you have to play it the same way. Rise and fall, regardless of what your what your buy in is on that. Uh, Mr. Taylor in the chat also got Miller Park drunk in the chat. Love to, to see you guys here. Uh, Mr. Taylor says, you know, in today's world, salute to transparency on any level. Yeah, and, you know, transparency is a huge thing that we're all about here at Occupy Fantasy. Uh, you know, we're all trying to help everybody grow, win some money. Uh, let's, let's dig right into it. So, yeah, Moose, I just, I just, I just want to make one more quick point about yep. the, the DraftKings Millionaire you know, Maker and why we say, you know, only play this if you have tickets or if your, your bankroll is massive and you can max it. Because if you look this week, it's a $20 entry fee, right? Okay. There are 205,000 entries. Okay. And you can beat uh, 200, I'm trying to calculate this correctly now, uh, 157, 100, 162,000 people you can beat um, and not even double your money. In fact, in order to double your money, you have to beat uh, this is insane. You have to beat 190,000 people to double your money. So if you're playing a GPP and your goal is to make money, you know, why would you ever play a GPP that, you know, if you enter with your own cash, you have to beat 190,000 lineups just to double your money. It seems insane. That's, that seems pretty hard to do. Um, yeah, that's why I only play Millie on if I have tickets. Uh, we have a question from Lucas, who's uh, our niche sport, little like er, literally got at everything. He says, "How did you feel the ten dollar milli was versus the twenty dollar milli? Was there any difference?" Uh, it wasn't too much of a difference, I don't think. It, you know, some of the chalk plays were a little higher owned, just because it's a little bit uh, more casual of a field. And uh, yeah, I think you know we look at ownership at different buy-in levels and you know sharper plays obviously are higher owned the higher you go and i think we saw that a little bit with the ten dollar one where the twenty dollar feels a little bit sharper um, but because it is such a high top prize regardless it's going to attract a lot of casual attention so i don't think the differences were that huge this week makes sense they just need to do like a one dollar milli and get what four million entries <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would okay that would be worth it if they did that yeah uh yeah so let me go ahead and let's clear this image 
here for you. And what we have on the background here is Fantasy Labs Contest Dashboard. It's a great free resource where they do pull uh, some contests. You can look at all the different users, the number of entries, their player pool, exposures, and some more stuff that we'll get into uh, later on. But if we look here, you know, talk about some of your top leverage plays. Um, they they were all majority were less than ten percent, and you know we always talk about ooh, excuse me, where you like to fade wide receivers that are less than ten percent owned. Uh, is this kind of how you went with this approach for for some of these wide receivers? Yeah, well, the guys you see up there. So my highest owned receivers, highest leverage receivers, I guess you'll say. Looking at this list, Mike Williams, Chris Conley, Darius Slayton, Tyler Lockett. Um, so those first three. Williams, and, for the first two specifically, Williams and Conley have been vastly underperforming uh, their opportunity in recent weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mike Williams makes his name on this list again this week. So this time next week, you'll see me have a high ownership on Mike Williams once again, just a, a little preview for week eight. Um, him and Chris Conley both were, uh, were in good spots based on the opportunity they had seen in recent weeks. And if you look at, i um, pulling it up now, actually. And I'm trying to find their exact opportunity in week seven. Uh, Mike Williams saw six targets, 48 air yards, not as, as much opportunity he had seen in recent weeks. But if you look at the, the accumulation of the last month, Williams has been getting a ton of targets, ton of air yards, and he's going to capitalize eventually. Chris Conley, on the other hand, was actually, uh, I think it was a, like 0.3% owned or something. Yeah, he actually ended up with eight targets, 76 air yards, and he had a couple end zone targets. Um, he ended up scoring 13 or 14 DraftKings points and was uh, like one catch away from five or six times value. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't mind the play at all. I, I'm happy with that, especially at his price tag. Slayton was another guy who was just big in massive air yards. And then the, the guys below those three were really part of my game stacks. Okay. And, and you do the, the three, <clears throat> excuse me, you do the three game stack approach. Uh, what three games did you choose to stack this week? Yeah, and I think someone has asked me before about this. You know, three is not a hard and fast rule. I try to, you know, our back testing has shown that three three game stacks is the right number. But we can, sh you know, show some judgment here and there if one stack really sticks out. Uh, so this past week, I stacked uh, Seattle, Baltimore. That was kind of my third choice. I was debating whether or not to include it. And on FanDuel, I didn't. I just went with two stacks. Okay. Uh, the other one was uh, Arizona and the Giants, and the other was Atlanta. In the Rams. Now, FanDuel, I went 75 Rams uh, Falcon stacks and 75 Cardinals uh, Giant stacks, and then all 75 Atlanta. So I used David Johnson. So uh, that's that's a big reason for my uh, negative ROI this week. Yeah, and that was terrible. And what was he injured on the first play, basically, or injured the whole pregame and re aggravated it? Yeah, awful. <laughs> yeah. Not good. Yeah. But um, yeah, so let's take a look. And, and then, of course, just Real quick about the defenses of Minnesota and Washington. Uh, Washington being such a cheap defense, was that was that something that was kind of outlined, or was that something you had some more aggressive salaries, uh, some more aggressive salary stack that you needed a cheap defense to fit in? Yeah, I, I, it was it was more so of I had expensive stacks and expensive players that I wanted to fit in, but also you know I talked about it seemingly on every piece of content last week how I thought the Redskins were actually in a good spot. Uh, against the Rams or against the uh, the 49ers, and especially that that cheap price tag in the weather, I thought they were uh, certainly the best option in that price range. Minnesota, you know, using DFS magic, I let the, the optimizer run its course the first couple of times, and it kept giving me a ton of, of Minnesota, and they were the top defense in our model, so I didn't mind that. I tweaked it a little bit here and there, but uh, you know, unfortunately, they, they didn't have any any big success on defense. Yeah, and it's a strange thing about that. So it was the fourth time, I think, in 30 years that a team covered the spread without scoring a point. So, Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the talking about the Redskins, yeah. <laughs> um, Mr. Taylor has a question. So did you own any Chase uh, Edmonds? Did you have him in any, any of your lineups? No, I thought about it, and I, for some reason I had 0%. Every other week I've stacked Arizona, I've at least put Chase Edmonds in you know, four or five lineups. But, again, it wouldn't have mattered this week. I, I mean, my ROI might have ticked up a couple points. Because the other guys I had in those game stacks, I had you know, Larry Fitzgerald in nearly every stack. He had like one catch. Yeah. So, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it wouldn't have mattered too much. Yeah, makes sense. Um, 
let's take a look here. Uh, anything else you want to talk about with your with your stacks and exposures or anything like that? Yeah, if you look at just in general, my highest owned guys, I made a concerted effort this week because I thought there were two top tier running backs. I wanted to get them both into my lineups as much as I could. Uh, the, the first one was definitely definitely Leonard Fournette. Mm -hmm. The other was Dalvin Cook. Cook I couldn't get as much because he was so expensive, but Fournette I was able to get uh, nearly 50% exposure to and you know the crazy thing is here is you actually had a negative leverage on both of those plays yeah i don't i i, I i'm still surprised that fournette ended up at 48 and a half percent ownership mm -hmm. um but he continues to get massive opportunity and it, <laughs> i can't remember who i told maybe it's chris and our, our staff chat that you know just right on my tombstone it's like but the opportunity was there because we're literally chasing the opportunity all these weeks yeah and uh you know some of these guys like like Leonard Fournette just never seems to capitalize on the massive opportunity that are given. It's yeah, it's, it's wild. I don't know how that that happens. Um, yeah, wild. Yeah, so guys, if you guys are here watching it, you're in the chat. Um, definitely go ahead and uh, if you have questions, go ahead and ask questions. I see Miller here says that uh, opportunity should be the new Occupy shirt. <laughs> but the opportunity though, <laughs> yeah. On a, on a tombstone, yeah, I yeah would, uh, that would be great. I would buy that and wear that every day. Yeah, just have yeah, like yeah. D, just have like DK crowns sprinkled on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea, actually. Yeah, we get to get, the, get our designer on that. Yep, absolutely. And so, uh, you know, we like to take a look at the maker, the the millionaire winner, see how he kind of did with his contests and all stuff like that. Top couple. So if we look here, uh, the person who hit that was Goki and overall pretty pretty good lineup. Um didn't he run 150 Aaron Rodgers lineups? We can double check here, but I, I saw that on Twitter before the show and I'm pretty sure that's what he did. And also I just want to make another note that the guy who finished seventh two gun, he also finished first in the three K millionaire maker. So uh he had a pretty good week. Wow. Okay. Nice. Good for him. So let's there's also this Carlsberg got third and fourth, so looks like yeah, we'll, uh we'll, we'll do some uh, investigation here live. Yeah, so let's take a look. So okay. I still remember what was it the very first time the person won and it was like all the people were like, Oh, one fifty max is dead and now it's just <laughs> made, made it come back on a, a yeah. small sample. So in this case Goki had uh five entries. He only had five total? Yeah, into this one. So I'm not sure where that 150 lineups for Aaron Rodgers came in. Uh, clearly a lie. Maybe it was maybe it was two gun, the guy who was in, in seven. Most real quick, though, we, we do have a question from oh. Acute Caps, uh, who I haven't seen around here before, so welcome. And the question is, do you think that Daniel Jones would be a good backup in the season-long fantasy, ESPN in particular? Mahomes is injured. He this guy's in the top three, trying to find a backup quarterback. Uh, most, I think Daniel Jones is a, a fine option. Mm -hmm. um, I guess a few caps. Who else is on your waiver wire that you may be able to pick up? Let us know in the chat, and uh, we'll see if we can find you a better option if there is one. Yep. Yeah, so even if it's uh, not pertaining to the 150 max, you have questions about season long, DFS, anything like that, uh, the NBA model's up. You can go ahead and check that out. If you have any questions, just definitely go ahead and let us know. Yeah, and if you're watching this replay on YouTube, and you're not aware of, we do this show live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Occupied Fantasy. Uh, you can follow us and, and hop in the chat and ask questions there. And, or if you're watching this replay on YouTube, certainly uh, one, hit that subscribe button. We'd appreciate that. But two, you can drop a comment in the in the, in the the chat below and, and we'll get back to you at some point. So, Okay. So Q came back and said, I have no waivers. I drafted Jones and my whole team is full. So... Yeah, I guess if that's the case. I guess the question is who's. I guess the question is who's on the waiver wire that you can drop for Jones. You can if if there's a better option than Jones, you can just do a straight swap. So let us know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, let's see. So I'm curious in uh, about Goki. So let's take a look. Yeah, even with five entries, he only did sixty percent max. So okay. what a goat. Um, really, just a, a fortunate performance from him then because he had. How much Aaron Rodgers? Aaron Rodgers was in his winning lineup, right? Yeah. So I think he had them in, in one lineup, right? He had Aaron Rodgers in one lineup. So his, his one lineup hit. But let's go back to his lineup really quickly. I do want to take a yeah. look at it. This is a really – I just assume this was a casual player. 
and, and no disrespect to Doki, but um, so, so, I don't know. It's a really weird. I guess he did have a two by one. He had two Green Bay players, Aaron Rodgers, Jimmy Graham, ran him back with Josh Jacobs. And then he also had a two by one Minnesota Detroit stack with mm-hmm. Diggs, Cook, and ran him back with Marvin Jones. Um, had a receiver, John Brown, the Bills defense. Really weird lineup construction here. I, I just, I think, and, and maybe I'm wrong if Goki is somehow listening to this, he can back it up with his thoughts. Uh, seems to me like a pretty random lineup. One other, is a little bit of correlation here. Yeah, no, I mean, that I, I've seen some people talk about you know, doing that, the, the mini stacks, uh, particularly like FanDuel baseball, but I guess it, it, if it could work, it, I mean, it did here in uh, NFL. Yeah, no, it, I mean, you know, <laughs> that's the thing about a single game, a single, a single week, you know, any, any lineup can win. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, that's why we have different strategies because, you know, we have to have a long term view. A- any lineup can win on a given week. That doesn't mean that that's the right way to play or, um, and, and again, 0% disrespect to Goki. Just thought this was an interesting lineup construction. Yep. And let's take a look at two gun in, in, in fantasy labs here. Yeah, I think two gun. I saw his, his tweet. Um, so did two gun only have four entries? So he only had four entries into this. Do you think, do you think, let me ask you this. Do you think more pros did more entries in that $3,000 contest and did less entries into this one? I don't think so. I mean, it was only $1,500 to max this one. So I feel like if pros were playing the 3K, they were also probably playing this one as well. So, um, so I, I don't think so. I think this was, a, you know, maybe just with the influx of casual players, this, this tournament was how many, how many thousands of people, you know, 300, 400,000 people. There was a pretty good chance that a, a non-pro was going to win just given this, the sheer size of it. Yeah. 411,000. <laughs> there you go. What about Carl's Burke? What was his, uh, his, uh, his exposure looking like Let's see. and his number of lineups finishing third and fourth. That's a hell of a, yeah. So first Carl's... of all, I bet that dude, had a, I bet he had a hell of a slip. Yeah. So Carlsberg had 150 max. Um, he actually Stay went 100, 150 lines on Aaron Rodgers. So maybe this was the guy, and maybe he was in, in first late in the, in, the, in, in the afternoon, and people saw this. So 150, and yeah, this, okay, because so this guy also had 94%, Aaron Jones. Um, so yeah, this guy just went literally all in on that game. Uh, quite impressive. Yeah, 50% leverage on MVS, which is a great call there. He b- bought out. Um, yeah. I mean... Great call is subjective. I know Valdez Scanling. Like, like in, uh, in, in in hindsight, yeah. I guess so because I think he had like four targets and he scored like thirty points. So yeah. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. But um, he literally, I mean, look at look at his top guys. Top six were all from that game. So either he was a Packers fan or he was really freaking sure about this game. So uh, <laughs> sharp as shit. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Great, great. Uh, yeah, so great winnings for him. Made off with a couple hundred thousand. Not not a bad day to start, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, a little, little decent day. Yeah. Is there any other uh, pros you want to take a look at? Um, I think that's it. I think those are the only ones. Go back to the, the 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 contest really quickly. I just want to see if there's any names I recognize in the top, you know, ten or twenty. Um, so let's scroll down a little bit. Yeah, and Carlsberg finished twelfth as well. Wow. Yeah, that was really quite the sweat for him. And 19th. So he definitely gave himself a lot of chances there. <laughs> yeah, definitely did. What, um, any other, you know, people with, with multiple finishes in the top? I see this, this toss and boss dude had a couple. Wait, is that the check finishing 30th? The dude almost went back to back. Didn't he win a couple weeks ago, right? Finishing number 30, the check? I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's him. Let's take a look at his exposure because can you imagine winning a million twice in three weeks? That would be crazy. Let's see, so the check one eighty two did a hundred entries and went his highest exposed player ninety three percent on Leonard Fournette, sixty three percent on Cooper Cup, fifty two percent on Chris Carson. Wow. Um, interesting. You know, speaking about other people, I know one of our members uh, in our Discord chat, so for those who don't know, our Twitch subscribe, uh, Twitch Prime subscribers or, or Amazon Prime subscribers get access to our Discord channel. Uh, one member, Paul, posted a screenshot where he finished, I think, 100th 
in the three thousand uh, dollar contest with Matt Ryan. Yeah, Paul was feeling himself after his uh, forty thousand dollar victory. So he threw a single bullet in a three thousand dollar contest. Actually, profited so so props to him, and uh, you know could have been a lot bigger finish. Yeah, um, I see Kentucky gentleman who's in the chat says Check is crushing every sport. Yeah, it sounds like if he's crush if he, yeah you know he's at the top of million millionaire makers every week. Moose is um, Check the guy who grinded his way from MLB arcade mode, or is that was that someone else? It could be. I'm not sure. Um, that may be him. There's a possibility. Yeah, and actually, acute caps in the chat asked uh, what this is that we're looking at. So if you missed it earlier. Um, or you just weren't paying attention, either way, this is the Fantasy Labs contest dashboard. It's a free tool from Fantasy Labs. Uh, again, we know Fantasy Labs is a competitor of Occupy Fantasy. However, uh, in addition to many other sites out there, there are fantastic free tools that you can and should be using to help your DFS game. This is one of them. You can take a look at any contest in DraftKings, any sport, uh, and look at how some of the top pros, top finishers created their lineups that week to really give you some insight into how to to make multiple lineups, how to approach GPPs. Yep. No, it's a great, great, great free resource. Love taking a look at that. Uh, and as Kentucky said, he's a Manny Laura guy. Speaking of the check. So, okay. That must have been someone yeah, Man, Manny Laura is, uh, I think, a, a Twitch, Twitch streamer. He was um, one of the original 150 maxers. In fact, he was an unlimited maxer. We talked about this. I can't remember which which, uh, which piece of content we talked this on, but back in the day, there used to be no entry limits in DFS, and Manny Lord was one of the few that was entering by hand as many lineups as he could. So uh, he certainly has some experience in, uh, in large field contests. So, so let me ask you a question, Brian, really quick. If Let's say if that was the case, unlimited entries, 411,000 people in this contest, what, what would you put, or would you just completely ignore the contest? Sorry, what was that? Most? I, was, I was reading the chat. I apologize. Yeah, if, if DraftKings still had that rule, so let's say unlimited max and this 411,000 person contest, how many entries would you put in or would you just ignore the contest altogether? That's a great question. You know, fortunately we don't have that anymore, but I can guarantee that if there was a thing you and I would be running some back testing on what the optimal number of lineups to, to, to enter it is, because I'm sure there's some sort of uh, breaking point as far as profitability goes. Yeah. You can't put in more than a million dollars with the entries. <laughs> And expect it yeah. to come out profitable. That's a good point. There you go. Yep. Yeah, and it's I have, I've had 350,000 of the 400 entries. <laughs> uh, at least you won a million. Lost money, yeah. but. Uh, <laughs> and Cute Cat says, Yeah, I want to join this. How do I? And Miller Park put the link to our website, occupyfantasy.com. Go check us out there. Yeah, links are also, if you're watching this on Twitch below, below the video, we have links with uh, information. Yep. Yep, yep. Cool beans. And so. Ooh. Let's take a look at your top entry. Let's take a look here. Oh, this disappointing top entry in the finish, like 20,000th. I know, right? Uh, let me go ahead and talk, take my webcam off while we talk about this. So this, as you're doing that, Moose, this was uh, one of my Baltimore Seattle game stacks. And as we talk about it every week, it's not necessarily you know, really helpful to look at a single lineup yeah. uh, from someone who is, especially if they have 150 entries. Um, you know, for the guys who have, you know, four or five entries and finish high, maybe it's, it's interesting, but, uh, you know, I think this, this single line, I'm, the biggest thing to showcase is, is the stacking and, you know, for me, Moose, every week I try to do uh, a five, five player game stack, three, three guys from one side, two from the other. However, in this Baltimore Seattle game, I didn't feel that there were that many options from the Baltimore side with Hollywood Brown out. Mm -hmm. I thought really the only guys I would want to use, especially with Lamar Jackson's rushing ability, was Mark Ingram and Mark Andrews. Um, okay. Ingram didn't really get going. Mark Andrews dropped everything thrown his way. So here I just had a two by two stack, which I, I, you don't see very often. Normally it's three by one, um, two by one, but this was two by two. Lamar and Ingram, Lockett and Metcalf on the other side, and then filled it in uh, with other plays around it. Yeah, no, definitely a very interesting approach. One, a really good way to differentiate differentiate yourself from from the other crowds. If you want to try and take that solo one down, I know we don't necessarily worry about that on, on main slates, but so could be a possibility. Um, yeah, and most a, a question for you. Uh, we talk about kind of that optimal combined ownership for GPPs being fifteen percent. I'm still pretty significantly under that mark in most of my lineups. Any thoughts off the top of your head of, of why or or should I be trying to actually attain that 15% number? 
So, I mean, in, in this lineup here, your average ownership was 8%. Let's yeah. take a look at Let's take a look at uh, the winning maker, the winning lineup maker here, if words can deceive me. And with him, let's see. It was probably closer, but it's still, I think, pretty low, actually, though. Uh, his was 12%. Okay, so still higher than mine, and probably at least, you know, I think I got to get to at least 10% in all my lineups. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, I really think you need to get to 10%, because when I was doing DFS Max, um, I try and set it to at least 10 and you know, that there's time I'm not 150 max and I'm 20 maxing. So I think I, I focus more on that, uh, as one of my more important factors. Um, and I do like with DFS magic that I can see the average projected ownership and I can just go click, 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 boom. I got a new lineup in for that specific one. It's all updated. Uh, so I can keep everything in check. Yeah, and actually, Kentucky gentleman in the chat asked if, if we have an optimizer. We have a lineup builder that we've partnered with, DFS Magic, uh, at DFS underscore Magic underscore on Twitter, DFSMagic.com. And it imports models or it imports values directly from the Occupy model. You can build up to 150 lineups, insane customization and, uh, and stacking abilities. And it'll be ready for NBA here soon in uh, probably a couple of weeks. So, yep. Cool beans. Speaking of uniqueness and, and lineups and stuff like that, it's time to go to some more the more tilting parts of this stream. <laughs> Literally the most aggravating time ever. Yep. So if you take a look here at the duplicate lineup filter uh, tab here on Fantasy Labs, it does show the highest number of duplicate lineups, uh, which basically shows, and maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe I'm being uh, a little too harsh, but it just shows the people who click, yep, on an optimizer and go with it. Um, this top lineup here, or in terms of the number of counts, had Matt Ryan in it, which was not a good look. Um, you know, on the surface, not a bad lineup, but Miami defense, not good. That's a terrible way to play it. Um, I imagine I imagine this was an optimizer, but also, so I guess my question is, and maybe we'll never figure it out, but like a lot of times each week these uh, – "Quote unquote," most duplicated lineups are near fifty thousand in salary, so you know I, I guess we can expect uh, a chalky fifty thousand dollar lineup to be duplicated. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, four hundred different users, a hundred different users. Uh, I don't know because average ownership isn't too too high. It's not like it's a thirty percent average ownership. So I, I just assume these are optimized lineups once again. I mean, if you take a look, I, I would think because people aren't necessarily checking, like how many people you really think. Look at this. The first, the top one, Miami defense. Second one, Washington defense. Third, Miami defense. Fourth, Miami defense. Do you think that many unique people are actively choosing Miami's defense? In a field of four hundred thousand people, maybe, but you're probably right. I just, I, you're, I think we come to the same conclusion every week that these most duplicated lineups are built from an optimizer that's widely available, and people just export the most optimal lineup. Yeah, could be a possibility there. Um, let's take a look. Yeah crazy uh and then speaking of you know you said top salary uh being the opposite of unique I'm not sure what that is yeah. um take a look here yeah 44 45 percent of entries used all fifty thousand dollars in salary which is a little bit higher than normal right yeah it definitely is and maybe that is uh attributed to lucas's question earlier about the ten dollar field maybe being softer than the twenty dollar field. Mm -hmm. Normally, that what is this number normally to the twenty dollar GDP? Uh, I believe it's closer to like. Well, actually, no, we can just look. <laughs> True. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So this is last week's millionaire millionaire maker. And. Um, and Mr. Taylor says it's thirty three point seven. So thanks, Mr. Taylor, okay. for the backup there. Cool. The assist. So yeah, a little bit higher this week. And so I think that's a direct indication of it being a more casual field. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why it, the, the thing's being dumb. And again, just to reiterate for those watching, this is the, what we're showing on screen is not Occupy Fantasy. This is Fantasy Labs Contest Dashboard. Yep. Free tool that we'd like to, to reference. Yep. Yep. 
Now Mr. Taylor says, I think, so I don't know if we can trust his, his source or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I am struggling to change the dates on this for some reason, so... All right, no worries. <laughs> keep it as it is. I'll just check right. out off stream. But, you know, if you look here, 90% uh, of the field used less than... or, or more than 49,500. So, 46 or, or greater. And there's, a, there's no reason to go below that, right? Yeah. Like, there's, there's no reason to leave more than 500 on the table on a, on a main slate. You know, single game, two game short, but, you know, main slate, literally no reason. The, the salaries are relatively sharp most of the time. No reason to, to go below. And if, you, if we say every week if you're using proper line of construction, you're going to have unique lineups anyways. So I'm looking here, and I'm just scrolling down. You see a huge drop-off. So you go from thousands of people to, like, literally in the tens of, of things. And then at the 49.5 mark, you get a huge spike of 4,000 people. 4,000 lineups used 45.9. Is that what the default is? Like if you just don't put in a lineup, I guess, or whatever you're... No, there is no default. Like uh, this forgot, isn't yeah, FanDuel. Yeah, yeah so... Right. Mm, I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Good question. I assume it's optimized placeholder or some shit. I don't know. Yeah, I don't maybe know. it's a placeholder that's lineup. Yeah, it's, that's strange. Um, and then speaking of the last tab here is the position usage. Which shows what people you do in flex, which again tilts Brian because in this case, sixteen percent of people use the tight end in flex. I don't know if you guys can see that on the stream here. Probably Literally, there's ninety percent of my lineups every week to people who play sixteen percent tight end flex. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know what really surprised me here is only thirty three percent of people use the wide receiver in their flex. Which you know we've talked about it before. We differ a little bit. You say it should be closer to 50-50. I say like 60-40 wide receiver on DraftKings uh, just because of the PPR bonus bonuses. But to have 33% of entries as wide receivers is just absolutely insane. Seems a little low. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, the PPR scoring, the uh, cheaper prices. I'm, I'm really surprised at that number. Yeah, as Kentucky Gentleman says, never tight end and flex. You're, you're no, on man. the right track there. No, I will occasionally do it if I'm game stacking and it's like Kelsey versus Kittle. Yeah, you know, San Francisco versus Kansas City. I'll, I'll, I'll double stack the tight end for the correlation. But any other situation, fortunately in DFS Magic, you have that ability to to distinguish whether you want a tight end flex in general, and then if there's a specific game stack you want to do it for, you can you can choose that option, which I think is one of my favorite features because I really don't want to end up with 20% tight end flex. Yeah, absolutely. And I've noticed that 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 if you go to that top lineup count, uh, the most used lineup. Most of the time, they have a tight end in their flex spot, which I'm, I'm so confused about why they. I would... wish I knew which optimizer was doing that. Yeah, because that's and I think that's a big reason why we like DFS Magic, why we partner with them. Why it's one of the better lineup builders, if not the best, because of that customization customization that allows you. Because I think it actually says on the DFS Magic homepage, you know, build lineups that don't do dumb shit. Essentially, like <laughs> we want the exposures, but we don't also don't want to make lineups that don't make any freaking sense. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Um, cool beans. So it's right now 340. I guess we'll be here for another five minutes or so if anyone has any more questions. Um, anything you want to add on? Is your, you know, we talk about, is there anything that you want to change for your, for your next coming week? Uh, anything I want to change for the coming week, I think, and maybe this upcoming week is a little bit different for me, just based on, you know, a lot of my, GPP strategy, my, my 150 max strategy for NFL revolves around finding receivers that have been underperforming lately. This week coming up, you know, normally that list is a handful of guys. This week is like 10 or 12 guys on the list. And there are actually uh, teammates. There are game stacks in this underperforming wide receiver list. We're going to talk about it on our podcast uh, this afternoon with, with me and my lead. Uh, so if you, if you don't listen to our podcast, definitely check that out. But uh, I think I should make a more concerted effort to include underperforming receivers in my game stack selection as opposed to all the other factors I use. That way, you know, if I'm going to try to get these guys in most of my lineups, I might as well get some correlation in there as well for the game stacks. Speaking of that, yeah, uh, Kentucky says, what size stack, what stack size do you generally prefer? Yeah, and it depends on the size of the contest. If you're playing a 100-player league, it's going to be different than 100,000-person GPP. For these, 100, you know, for these large, large field GPPs, 
Uh, I almost always, I don't want to say exclusively always because of that Baltimore Seattle game, for example, uh, but five player sacks, three guys from one side, including the quarterback, two from the other uh, is what I'm going to do a majority of the time. Now, if you're playing a 100 player league on FanDuel, like we recommend most people to do, you can certainly, and it's recommended to do just maybe a two by one stack quarterback receiver, running back with another running back and receiver. Uh, you really got to match that, that risk reward ceiling with uh, the amount of people you have to beat. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you on that. And, you know, as we talk about in our ultimate guide, uh, how to do contest selection and bankroll management, that's what our daily plugs there to help out for as well. Um, it really helps guide how you should be building your lineups, not actually just giving away lineups, which is nice. Yeah, and, and it, the daily plug, one, Chris does a fantastic job of writing it and really guiding people. And, you know, for 90% of DFS players, you should be listening to the contest recommendations in there. Uh, but we've partnered for, with DFS Magic to show people that you know there are other ways to play um, 150 maxing and, and multi-entry, especially if you win a lot of satellite tickets, is, a, a, is I don't know if it's the only way, but one of the, the, the better ways to win a ton of money in DFS. Um, so we're doing these streams every week to, to try to show people you know how to do it. Because if you follow the daily plug, you're going to play low risk allocation 80 to 90 percent of the time, and then that final 10% allocation is high risk. And whether you choose to make just a couple of lineups and put them in leagues or you try out 150 maxing, it's up to you. But a majority of the allocation is going to be recommended that you play those 50 50 double ups, head to heads, and et cetera. Yeah. And don't also forget the free rolls as well, which is nice. Yes. Um, definitely. So, yep. Um, this is actually really quick before we head out. I do want to mention this. I just saw, I was in the DraftKings lobby and there is. A really neat contest that is 150 maxable. It's unlimited entries, 150 max. First prize gets an autographed Larry Fitzgerald jersey. Oh, the Larry Fitzgerald's all over the market on DraftKings. Yeah, he's he's crushing it right now. But um, I, I was going to look because I uh, what I do in terms of my multiple lineup building is I do the quarter jukebox, the 25 cent, and then I do the pooch punt on Fanduel. Just because again, it's not bankroll drainers per se in terms of what my bankroll is, and uh, it gives me great, great practice to, to learn. So when my bankroll does grow large enough, I can do it into uh, like the play action, you know, the first down, something like smart. that. Smart. It's definitely smart. And most of actually, I have two quick questions here in the okay. chat. Uh, one from Kentucky gentleman: Do you include running backs in your stacks? I do, especially if they're uh, involved in the passing game as well. Generally, running backs and quarterbacks have about an 8 to 10% correlation. It's a little bit higher if it's a pass-catching running back. And uh, opposing running backs have about a 3% correlation. Again, higher if it's a pass-catching running back. Uh, so, yeah, I will include them if it makes sense. I'm not going to include – I'm trying to think of an example here. I, the only one that comes to mind is LeGarrette Blunt. I'm not going to – whoever the 2019 equivalent of LeGarrette Blunt is, I'm not going to include that type of guy in a stack. <laughs> makes sense yeah no i agree with that um and then the last one from miller park says breeze back this week in mahomes at practice um yeah i didn't i didn't know if have they confirmed breeze as a starter yet no they're gonna wait till the end of the week to see how he can grip the ball and how his his uh his throwing is i expect him to be back just based on some of the comments we've heard mahomes is more of a gamesmanship thing the, the minimum he'll be back is in three weeks. There's a lot of instability when you dislocate your kneecap, at least according to the injury experts that I listen to. Mm -hmm. uh, and they'd be putting him at great risk if he comes back out before then. So, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't read too much into my home's practicing. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So, all right. Any last words you want to take us out of here? Uh, I think that is it. I think we had a lot of key topics today, just uh, some logistical stuff here. Uh, if you're not following, be sure to click that follow button here on whether it's Twitch or you're watching replay on YouTube. Become a Twitch subscriber to us. It's free if you have Amazon Prime and you get access to our Discord channel where you can chat with other members. And we'll have scheduled Q&A sessions in there with Occupy staff. So great way to get access to us. Podcast this week, uh, recording on Wednesday evening, DFS edition, and a season-long episode. So subscribe in your favorite podcast app. And I think I'm going to do an NHL stream, uh, Twitch stream on Friday at some point during the day. Uh, and that, that replay will be up immediately afterwards too. Awesome. Last, last two things before we head out. Kentucky gentleman says, how do you prioritize defense or do you just let it happen organically? Yeah, I let it happen organically to start. 
just see what the, see what the lineup builder's thinking but, and see what our model is thinking. Uh, thankfully, DFS Magic, uh, it pulls the, mo the, the model value from the Occupy model. And, uh, you know, the way they build lineups at DFS Magic is based on a lot of back testing. So they distribute those defenses pretty optimally. Uh, it just, if it gets wacky or I don't like some of the, of the, uh, of the exposures, I'll go ahead and, and, and manually input uh, some exposure settings, but for the most part, I just let it happen organically. Nice. And, uh, and then just a couple uh, comments. Muff stuff says you guys are the goats. Neffer says the mo NHL model is crushing it. Can't wait for NHL stream. So yes, I guess you got the, uh, you go ahead to go that, do that on Friday. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I want to do a lot of NHL streams and talk about it being so profitable. So I'm going to do those. I'm going to try to do NHL streams around Twitch twice a week. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, the model's crushing it. If you use the stack dashboard, um, the top stacks have absolutely been destroying. Uh, and you'd likely have great success if you can use it. Yep, because we have we we have included a lot more stuff uh, in there as well. And last question, last last question. <laughs> Main Demon says, "Do you think y'all have an addiction problem?" Um, I don't really think I it's a an problem. addiction problem. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think? It's um, a, I don't think no, it's a problem. I, I don't think that's I, I, no, if I'm a millionaire from it, it's not really addictive. It's not a, a problem. So, um, you know, if I start, if I go into debt, then maybe I need to go to Gamblers Anonymous. But uh, I look at it as more investing rather than gambling. So. Yep. <laughs> All right. For me, Moose, Brian, Occupy Fantasy. Go check us out, OccupyFantasy.com. We'll be back at it again soon. Follow us for updates. Talk to you guys later. Peace. Peace.